Alright, then we're going to look at some basic trig equations. I mean basic trig equations. Nothing real difficult. You got this. Let's go. Alright, first is to solve sine x equals 1 half. So basically that's saying, uh, what value of x right there? Where is sine 1 half? And everybody knows it's at power over 6, but it's also at 5 power 6. So that is where sine is a half. Now, if they ask you for all the solutions, we, this is going to look weird. We're going to write this. You're going to have to write power 6 plus... I'm trying to see what your book uses, 2k pi, and also 5 pi over 6 plus 2k pi. And what that represents is, remember if you add 2 pi to any, any number there on our unit circle, you're right back where you started. So this represents all the possible, like there's an infinite amount of answers. K can be an integer. K is, represents an integer, which is either positive or negative whole number. Um... Just adding or subtracting two pi to those answers forever and ever and ever. Any multiple of two pi gives you the same exact result. So if it's sine or cosine and they ask you for all the solutions, we're going to add 2k pi to the solutions that we find. If it's tangent or cotangent, we're just going to add pi because the period is just one pi on those. All right, this one says solve, and I forgot to put the little square root symbol there. Okay, it says solve cosine x equals negative square root of 2 over 2. Which is going to be the power of fours, but because it's negative, cosine is negative in quadrant two and quadrant three. So that means that the answer would be three pi over four and also five pi over four. Now, if they ask you for all the solutions, again, same thing. I'm going to say three pi over four plus two k pi. That represents all those quadrant twos. And the five pi over four plus two k pi, that represents all the quadrant threes that you could possibly come up with. Remember, k represents an integer. Um, cosine of x is 0.65. If you see one like this one, that's not one that we know. So we're going to take our calculator and we're going to do this right here. We're going to say x equals inverse cosine of 0.65. So I'm just going to punch that in right now. Second cosine, 0.65. And it gives me this. It gives me 0.8632. And what that's giving me right there is it's giving me the quadrant one answer, 0.8632. To get the uh, other place where cosine is positive, cosine is positive in quadrant one and also quadrant four. So I'm going to have to subtract this from 2 pi. I'm about to do 2 pi minus 0.8632 because that's going to give me the other solution in quadrant four. So I'm going to 2, two pi minus 0.863, uh, if I could punch it right, 32, and I'm getting about this number right here, about 5.42. Okay, when I do that. So there's your two answers. And again, if you need to put all the answers, I would add plus. And your book's going to, it's going to, they're going to give you sometimes where they're going to say, just find all the answers between zero and two pi. And if they do that, you don't have to write this. If they say find all the solutions, then we'll have to add the two K pi. All right, where's tangent two? Same deal. That's not one that I know. So I'm about to do this. I'm about to say X is the inverse tangent of two. All right, now, first of all, that's a positive number, and tangent is positive in quadrant one and quadrant three. So when I punch my calculator, it's going to give me the um, first quadrant answer. It gives me this, 1.1071. But what I need is I need the quadrant three answer. Now, think about this. How far is quadrant three from quadrant one? And the answer is it's pi away. It's half the circle away. So I'm going to add pi to that answer, which I'm doing right now on the calculator, and it's giving me 4.25. So there are my two solutions there. And here's one thing about tangent. If you're solving tangent and ask you for all the solutions, we're just going to add k pi and k pi because the period of tangent is just 1 pi, not 2 pi. Remember when we did the graphs of tangent? We went negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Okay, so how far is that? That's 1 pi. Okay, do a little bit of work this time. So move the 1 over. Don't solve the equation until you move everything over. You isolate the sine or cosine or tangent. Divide by 2 here. I get it down to where it says sine x is 1 half. So I'm asking myself, self, where is sine 1 half? That's an easy one. That's at pi over 6. And also quadrant 2 because it's positive, which would be 5 pi over 6. And again, if they wanted all the answers, you were going to say pi over 6 plus 2k pi and 5 pi over 6 plus 2k pi. All right, tangent squared is negative 3. Again, I'm going to oscillate the tangent. I'm moving the 3 over. I'm going to take the square root of it both sides. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Don't forget this. You get plus or minus square root of 3. 
which means that represents every single quadrant. Okay, but I'm really doing inverse tangent. So to, to really represent each one, the positive quadrant, I can say, well, that's quadrant one, which would be power three. Remember, tangent one, three, that's power three. And also uh, the fourth quadrant, no, not the fourth. Uh, yeah, because it's negative, the fourth quadrant being negative power three. And you can just add k pi. Because if you add k pi to the first quadrant, that puts you, you know, one pi puts you in quadrant three. So tangent is positive in one and three. This answer, adding pi quadrant four, if you add pi to that, puts you in quadrant two, which is where it's negative. So both those answers are really good for inverse, sorry, for, for that equation. All right, a little bit more difficult. Just, they're increasing difficulty just a little bit as we go. This one says 2 cosine squared minus 7x plus 3. I'm going to just pretend like that's an x squared and that's an x right there. And I'm going to factor like we always have. Um, if you were to do, I'm doing slide, divide, slide. But I'm doing it in my head to keep the video short. So um, I would get this. I would get a minus 3 there and a minus 1 there. So that means my cosine x would mean would equal whatever makes the parentheses 0. Which means cosine x is a half. And also... The second part will be cosine x equals 3. Now, remember, cosine can never be bigger than 1 or less than negative 1, so there's no solution coming out of there. Where's cosine a half? You know, pi over 3, and also quadrant 4, which is going to be 5 pi over 3. All right, got one more here. Last one, same kind of deal. We're going to factor again. Uh, when you start to factor, always look for GCF, which is cosine. So I'm going to take out the cosine x, and that will leave a 5 sine x plus 4 equals zero. And as I start to solve this one, I'm going to, first of all, that means cosine x is going to be zero. And sine x is going to be negative four fifths. Okay, so I know where cosine x is zero. Cosine x is zero is at the power two, so the power two and also three pi over two. All right, where is sine negative four fifths? I don't know that one. So I'm going to take my calculator. I'm going to inverse sine negative four fifths, and it tells me this number, it tells me negative 0.93, and that's for sine is negative. Sine is negative in quad, that's quadrant four. So to get the other answer, I'm going to add pi to that to get the other one. If I add pi to negative 0.93, it gives me 4.07, which is awesome. And that's, those are the solutions right there. All right, hopefully it wasn't too bad. Just some basic equations. We'll work on it tomorrow. I say that every video, but we'll do it. See you then.